guys, it's me, Takani, and today we'll be recapping episode 6 of Winter House season 3. Say my name, say my name. We start with Katie. I'm sorry, I mean Floody, being annoyed at Schwartz for making such a huge deal out of her name. As she storms away angrily that he can't say her name, he comments about how it's a horrible name. Which, I feel like saying that is more disrespectful to his ex-wife Katie than just pursuing someone also named Katie. Schwartz admits in his confessional that he might be using it as a cop-out because he doesn't want to develop feelings. Need I remind the record that he cheated on his wife Katie with someone named Kate. And it wasn't a big deal then, but now all of a sudden it's a big deal. I just find that a little bit suspicious. Like he's trying to put on an act for the show to make himself look like the good guy. Malia is flirting with the ride instructor from their little horse session the other day, and they make out. Malia talks about in her confessional how it's not the first time that she made out with a Hannah, and Katie tells her that she needs to give some advice to Schwartz. While Danielle attempts to save a horse and ride a cowboy, they get interrupted by a bunch of people coming downstairs. Alex goes straight back to the party, getting people's Instagrams, and kind of casually flirting with some girls. One girl even tried to kiss him on the lips, but he did turn his face so that she only kissed his cheek, but then he proceeded to give her his Instagram. Also, I forgot to mention that Danielle is literally standing right next to him when that's all happening. I'm sure that feels great for her. Danielle storms off and asks Amanda, Casey, and Malia if she's crazy for being annoyed that Alex is flirting with other girls right in front of her when they just tussled in some hay, you know? Amanda jokes and is like, hold on, I need a moment. Yeah, I'd be- f Danielle instantly gets- she says it shouldn't have taken them more than a second to say that she had a right to be f about it. While I understand that they're friends with benefits, I will agree with Danielle that they just made out and potentially did some other things, and then he went right back to flirting with other women. I find that a little bit messy, especially since he did it right in front of her, too. The house then ends the party and kicks everyone out, and as they're cleaning up, Danielle vents about wanting to blow up on Alex. So he pretty much just kind of goes to his room, shuts the door, covers his camera, and the only thing I could think that he does when he covers his, ca covers his camera is cry, because why else would he cover his camera? And another reason I assumed that he was crying was because when Danielle went to go check on him, she was like, I'm the one who should be upset, not you. And then they proceed to talk it out, kind of. And then after talking it out, Danielle takes Alex to her room and they bang it out. I don't know how she wants to sleep with a man that was just trying to bang her and then immediately was flirting with other people, but, you know, you do you, girl. We cut to Schwartz lying in Katie's bed, talking about how he googled how to change a name in Colorado, and he has it up on his phone. And it's at this moment I would again like to remind everybody that Katie's one rule, his ex-wife Katie, her one rule is do not pursue anyone in their friend group. She doesn't feel disrespected if you pursue someone with the same name. She doesn't feel disrespected if she pur he pursues anybody else. Just don't pursue anybody in the friend group. Which he did, and it wasn't a big deal. He didn't care about disrespecting her then. But now it's such a big deal that he has to search how to change someone's name in Colorado. But I also still think that Schwartz and Raquel was a cover-up for Sandoval. But again, that's a topic for another day. Despite Schwartz trying to change her name, Katie is still interested in him. And they proceed to go to a bathroom and there's like a lot of kissy noises. She tosses her bra out because she doesn't want it to be picked up on the microphone. And they do stuff in the bathroom. But then Aisha really has to pee and she's drunk and tired and she just walks into the bathroom and is like, I gotta pee and just goes pee. And so it kind of ruins the moment for Schwartz and Katie, so they get dressed and go their separate ways. It's Jordan's day to throw the house party, and she decides to make brunch, and has everyone make their own iron-on onesies. Jordan is super eager to wear hers. She loves onesies, she says. So in the dining room, with all the onesies and stuff, she just strips down to her underwear and puts on her new onesie. Brian is there, and of course Alex is there, and she makes a comment about being Sorry, I just really want to put this on. And Alex is like, oh, we don't mind. And you know Danielle is still fuming about it. Over brunch, they talk about who hooked up with who. 
and stuff like that. And Jordan says that she doesn't do hookups and she takes intimate relationships very seriously. I really don't understand why Danielle finds Jordan such a threat, especially after hearing her say that, because I don't think Jordan would even sleep with Alex, like, at all. Like, he literally just wants a friends with benefits situation, and it doesn't seem like Jordan would consider that. At least that's what she said at the table, anyway. Corey sets up some flag football, and everyone's outside playing except for Schwartz and Katie, because Schwartz is packing to leave. He's going home today so that he can film the Vanderpump Rules reunion. Schwartz asks Katie, and yes, he says her name finally, to help him pack. And she is swooning over it. Girl, this couldn't be any more the bare minimum. He said your name, so now you want to sleep with him really, really bad? Like, I don't know. Literally just last night, he was Googling how to change your name in Colorado. It doesn't flip that fast, you know? Anyway, Schwartz leaves, and that's pretty much the end of this episode. What did you guys think? Do you think Danielle has a right to be mad about Alex flirting with Jordan? It seems like she's more angry at Jordan for being flirted with than she is about Alex actually flirting with her. At least that's how it comes across to me. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to like or dislike this video. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next video. Bye, guys!